Okay, I'm just processing right now. Okay, well, there we are on YouTube. Excellent. Okay, I'm gonna restart again. Welcome to Syndication Attorney's free monthly podcast, where we talk about topics of interest to real estate syndicators with the opportunity to uh, ask live questions and get answers at the end of the call. I am an attorney, Kim Lisa Taylor. Before we get started, please note that all of our podcasts will be recorded and may be used for future promotion, posted on our website, uh, broadcast on a podcast or uh, posted on social media. And we are live streaming on YouTube. So if you don't wish to have your voice recorded, you can either just ask your question in the chat, ask uh, your question in the Q&A. Uh, if you want to have your voice recorded, you can uh, raise your hand. Um, information discussed during this free podcast is of a general educational nature and should not be construed as legal advice. Uh, so today... We are talking about how to attract high net worth investors, right, on autopilot with uh, Yakov Smart. And uh, Yakov, I met just recently at RE Mentors Ultimate Partnering event in uh, what Phoenix, right, mm -hmm. a couple of months ago. And I was impressed with uh, his services and what he had to offer. So we kind of connected and said, let's share this with our audience. So that's why he's here. So Yakov, tell us about yourself and your business and who you are and what you do. Yeah, definitely. So I'll give you the real Cliff Notes version here. And first of all, thank you for having me, Kim. And it's going to be good stuff. I know we have a very relevant audience, real estate syndicators, and it's all about raising capital, finding investors, doing more syndications, doing bigger deals, right? So my business is called Investor Attraction Academy. We work with people who want to scale their capital raising. We show them innovative ways of using the internet to build relationships legally and in a natural, authentic way with high net worth investors who can invest in their deals. Been doing this a while, um, wrote a book on LinkedIn marketing several years ago. And then in 2020, started working pretty much mutually exclusively with real estate syndicators, entrepreneurs, raising capital. At this point, we've had, I don't know what the exact number is, but I know it's in the tens of millions of private capital raised as a result of some of these strategies and systems that we're going to be talking about today. And one of the biggest things that we do when we work with people is we actually set up some of these key systems that we'll be talking about for them, give them a strategic guidance so they can go out there, build those relationships, and ultimately raise more capital as a result. Excellent. That definitely sounds like something that our clients and uh, all of you potential syndicators out there who haven't done a deal yet need to know about. Uh, in fact, I'm interested in learning this. Half the reason I interview people is because I want to learn about their services because I might, might want to use it for our business. And uh, so we, we do a little bit of stuff on LinkedIn, but I'm absolutely certain that we are not maximizing our uh, returns that we could be getting off from uh, LinkedIn. So I'm super excited that you've joined and uh, maybe we're going to be able to do some business together that way too. Um, all right. So where are the best places to find investors online? I mean, I know, you know, some people find them on Facebook, some people LinkedIn, some, you know, people are, you know, claiming TikTok is the next greatest thing. What are, what are you seeing? Well, there's so many options, right? I mean, in, in theory, you can find investors anywhere, Instagram, TikTok, YouTube, you could have a podcast, you could be a guest on podcasts, you could guest blog, you could have SEO, you could do pay-per-click, you could do YouTube ads, you could do Facebook ads, you LinkedIn ads, you could do organic outreach, you could post content, just the, even that list alone is like a big buffet and it's overwhelming. Like, I'm, I'm like overwhelmed just hearing yeah, that. I just saw it basically <laughs> want to do nothing, which is what, what some people do when they hear that, right? So the best places are, you know, you have to think about, okay, who your ideal investor is, right? You know, for most people starting out that we work with, we talk about having an inbound and an outbound strategy, okay? So as far as outbound goes, LinkedIn right now, great place to get hyper-focused and who you're building those relationships with, who you're getting in front of and doing it in an intentional way. Facebook can be as well. I think most people where they're at in their investor attraction journey, I think starting on those two platforms and building from there is, is gonna be the name of the game. So Facebook and LinkedIn. So I know for us, for finding legal clients, Facebook has not been good, but uh, for us, Google's been good and also LinkedIn's been good. But I know that for a lot of my clients that Facebook has been really great for them. So, um, okay, well, good. So 
Facebook, what do you think about uh, the other platforms like, you know, Instagram, TikTok? I mean, are those as useful or maybe not as good for this purpose? I think they can be. I think a lot of times people overextend themselves, right? And try to be everywhere. And unless you've got a huge budget, huge team, a lot of resources already, I think that's a major mistake. So I'll share a concept that we talk about in our programs called the levels of investor attraction, right? So most people, when they start out, they're starting with what? Friends and family, right? And when they start to go beyond that current network, they know online is the way to do it. And they start doing things like starting a podcast, YouTube channel, maybe they want to run Facebook ads. And we call that a level three activity, right? And my contention is you want to start where you're at. You want to start at level one. So the real foundation is having outbound messages that build relationships and book calls with potential investors. Not that go out there and solicit people, but that get curiosity and start that intro call, just like you would when you meet someone at a conference, right? You know, having that initial intro conversation. So that's level one. A lot of people start at level two, which is posting, content creation, all those different things that can get overwhelming and take up a lot of resources. What's great about level one is you can automate a lot of the process. You can really streamline things through templates, automations, some of these different things that we're going to be talking about. And I think a lot of syndicators, if they just start at level one and then branch out into posting content, then branch out into writing books, you know, ads, all these different things. If you want to do them great, you might not even need to. But understand the level one activities, they're going to get you those quick wins. And a lot of the time, that's the core foundation that you'll need. So I think any platform can be useful. But until you have the strategy and the messaging dialed in and the funnel as well to drive people to, um, you're not going to be able to really maximize the platform that you're using. So, so level one is the building relationships and instigating calls. And that's mm -hmm. where you're dealing with your message and your automation, right? Mm -hmm. Direct messaging, yep. And then uh, the content creation would be kind of level two. Once you've got that up and running, mm -hmm. you can start thinking about you know, posting a lot of content. Uh, I mean, that's what we've done. It's taken us years to get the content that we have. Yeah. But, um, here's one of the things I do, just a little tip for the people that are on the call. If I find myself answering a long question in an email, I just go ahead and uh, cut and paste that and kind of edit it to make it an FAQ. Mm -hmm. um, and I recast the question. So, it, you know, I'm not stealing that person's exact words, but I'm saying, okay, here's the question that I'm answering. And, uh, and I've written three this week, uh, just based on doing that. Um, another place, if you want to do, uh, get some great, uh, questions and answers that you can use as FAQs, uh, get on bigger pockets, right? Because you can get into the forums and you can hear people's questions and whatever they're asking. A lot of other people are thinking, um, but, but you're kind of trying to think of it as a syndicator. You're thinking, what are the questions my investors are asking? Mm -hmm. so you always want to cast it in their, from their viewpoint. What are, what are they asking? I mean, for me, it's easier because it's like, what are my syndication clients or potential clients asking? Well, they're emailing me that stuff every day. Um, but, uh, but that's how I do it is just, if you see you're writing yourself a two or three paragraph email in response to somebody's question, turn it into an FAQ. Now you've got some content posted on your website, you know, keep doing that. And if, uh, you know, and then I write articles, uh, when I find myself writing more than just a two or three page paragraph, or it's something like, oh, I can write a one or two page article about this. I'll, I'll go ahead and write that. And then, uh, I send it to my editor. She edit, edits it, posts it. So that's how you get content. Uh, and then eventually when I had enough content and uh, then, you know, FAQs and all these other things, I turned it into a book. So, you know, that's for me been uh, my journey in creating content, but I will tell you, it's not without time, effort, pain, <laughs> and it takes a long time. So uh, I, I like your idea of kind of starting with level one, which is, I think where you guys come in, right. And helping people get that part of it set up, which can be pretty overwhelming by itself. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it's really important too, because with level one, you know, that's where you can see a lot more of the quick wins and then still doing the level two things. For example, being a guest on podcasts, right? You know, that's a level two activity. You can still do them in harmony, but it's more of, I look at it 80, 20, right? So as you're starting out building your investor list, going beyond your current network, 80%, that foundation is level one, having conversations and booking calls with potential investors, educating people, right? And then level two is that content. And then uh, like you were talking about in your, in your story, it stacks up, right? It really starts to compound. So 
but that that's not going to happen overnight in a project like writing a book, right? We talked about, you know, you're you know, re-releasing your book. That's a big project. It takes resources and takes bandwidth. And the, there's a huge long-term return on that, but it's not, if someone's just starting out trying to find more investors beyond their current network, or, you know, even with their raise, capital raising journey, and they just want to write a book out of the gate. Well, I mean, it's, it's usually not the best play, you know, cause it's something, if you're like, okay, I want to add more investors in the next six months. Well, you might not even publish the book for the next six months. Right. So it, it's one of those things. It's really important to have, we call it a strategic plan. When we work with people just like a roadmap or, okay, you know, how do you get from where you are right now to having X amount of investors or access to X amount of capital for future syndications? Yeah. Well, my first book took me nine years to write. <laughs> I don't recommend anybody do that. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you can get a little more focused than I did. I finally asked Dave Lindahl, who's written a whole bunch of books, saying, how do you get them all done, Dave? And he said, I just get up an hour earlier. So I started doing that too. Mm -hmm. And I find I get my best writing done in the morning, like before coffee, before dealing with animals or <laughs> you know, right. like in the morning. Um yeah. And then, you know, updating the book, that's a chore in itself. That's the thing that keeps me up at night. So, uh, yeah, it, you, you can do these things, but it's not easy. Um, so, okay. What are some of the biggest social media mistakes you see syndicators and capital raisers making? We could do an hour long seminar on this topic alone. Like there, there's first of all, doing nothing. I mean, that that's the biggest mistake. Like, you know, having, You've got a resource available on social media. Literally millions of high net worth individuals are there, right? Millions of people. It's free to use. You can advertise, but there's a lot of things you can do that are free to use, right? That cost almost nothing and reaching those people and building relationships. So people overthink it. They think that um, communication and psychology, for some reason, they get online and get on social media. They just, all the common sense just goes out the window. They're like, okay, if I message someone, I'm going to send them five paragraphs. They don't know who I am, but here we go, right? If I post something, I'm going to write it super formally and just, you know, not capture people's attention, right? So forgetting human nature is a big one. Um, another one, a more tactical one is they don't have their profiles updated, right? So here's what I mean. For example, on LinkedIn, if you don't have those sections filled in, your reach is going to be limited. Just having the sections filled in is going to suggest you as a contact to people, right? If you're, if you're posting something or messaging, it's going to give you more reach. Same thing on Facebook, right? Your personal Facebook and, you know, some people talk about business pages, business pages on Facebook, unless you're paying to play, you're not going to get much reach. And a lot of people think that they just need to post on their business page. Well, no one, no one sees the stuff, right? So that's an, another mistake. They think that if they have X amount of friends or connections, let's say you have 4,000 friends on Facebook or 4,000 know, connections on LinkedIn and you post something that all 4,000 or the majority are going to see them. Uh -uh, there's a whole algorithm. You could have 4,000 connections and have 40 people see what you posted, right? So um, that's a really important thing not to overstate, right? Um, right? Another mistake is they don't sound credible with their profile. Right? It doesn't look professional. And it doesn't grab attention, right? It's very much all about them. It doesn't talk, but I love what you said earlier about the FAQs. It doesn't meet the investors where they're at, right? It doesn't have people see, feel seen and heard and understood, right? It's all about, hey, I've got great deals. We've got the best returns, hit me up, right? That kind of thing. Another mistake, and you know, this as an attorney is people will post their deals and it's illegal to do that. They've got a 506P and they're blasting the deal because they're desperate to raise money, right? So it comes down to building the relationships before you need to ask someone for money, right? Just like you would offline, the same thing applies to online, right? And the other thing is not streamlining things, not being systematic, not having automation in place, right? Because, you know, if you're, if you're asking yourself to do that grunt work every day and you don't like being on social media, you don't really know how to do it, your time is better spent building relationships finding deals and building the business, right? So there's a lot that you can streamline, a lot you can automate and systematize, whether it's human automation, having a virtual assistant, having an admin person who does some of these tasks, or better yet, automation that starts the conversations, responds to some of the posting that makes your life easier. And then the other thing is, you know, people don't do enough to build trust one to many, right? If you're having to repeat the same questions again and again, when you talk to a potential investor, I don't know about you, but I hate that stuff, right? It's like, I don't like repeating. It doesn't, doesn't excite me, right? So we're big on, and we'll talk about this on next week's workshop as well, having a pre-recorded webinar, right? Call them an investor attraction webinar. It's not a solicitation. It's for entertainment purposes only, as we say, right? But it, you know, shows people a little bit about who you are, track record, 
how you look at investing, strategy, that type of thing. And it starts to do that, just like you would share that with them one-on-one, it does it one-to-many so that ideally, if you're generating inbound leads, they're coming, they're watching that first before they talk to you, right? So, you know, a lot of the legwork you can have the automation do for you. That all sounds amazing. And it all sounds like stuff that I would never be able to do on my own. And I would absolutely hire an expert to do that for me. Um, yeah, I can't say enough how I just thinking about doing that by myself is just like, yeah, no, it's never going to get done. Um, all right. So why is it, I, I guess maybe we've already kind of covered this, but if you want to expand on it, uh, why is it so important that your LinkedIn profile stands out? Yeah, and it's a really big thing. A lot of people don't know this, but when someone goes to Google your name, even if you haven't logged into your profile in years, that profile is going to come up on the first page most of the time. Sometimes it'll even be the very first thing just because LinkedIn, for whatever reason, has really strong SEO, right? So, you know, as an investor, if they most of the time, today's day and age, they're going to Google you before investing money with you. I'd hope so anyway, right? They're going to at least Google you, see if there's any red flags, and that LinkedIn profile comes up. And if that LinkedIn profile is incongruent to what you're saying, right? If you're saying, hey, you know, I'm the president of XYZ Capital, and this is what we do, and your profile positions you differently, or it just looks scattered or sloppy, or like you've got 10 different businesses and it's all over the place, it's a red flag, right? You know, so it's something that it's not necessarily going to get someone to wire you money right away, obviously, but it can get someone deterred from investing with you, right? So it's important to have that cleaned up. It's important to establish credibility. And it also gives you that added visibility piece, right? And so a lot of the time, you know, people really focus on their websites and websites are really important, but, you know, other assets like a LinkedIn profile that's optimized or a funnel where you have an automated way of following up with people capturing leads, those assets online are of equal, if not greater importance, right? And it's just like having real estate assets. Those are things that you can pull on again and again for cash flow online. You have those assets in place. You can lean on them for credibility. You can lean on them for, you know, establishing trust with investors and making your life that much easier. Wow. I never even thought about that. And I can't tell you when the last time I updated my LinkedIn profile, there's probably been more than a year, right? So how often should somebody be updating it? Well, ideally, if they're doing the same thing, it's set it and forget it, right? You know, every once in a while, maybe you add an experience or you want to brush up on something, but that's, that's another mistake that people make. You know, they're putting their focus on updating the profile on the funnel, when in reality, that needs to be set it and forget it. And their focus needs to be on generating what's called traffic, right? So eyeballs, reaching more people, getting more people in the front door, instead of constantly having to repaint, rearrange the front door, right? So you build the front door systems once, set and forget them. That's where the automation comes in. And then the focus of your marketing is getting more of the right people in those front doors. Okay. All right. Well, that sounds like advice I need to take. Um, what are the so what are some of the best ways that people can stand out to investors online? I mean, there's so many people looking for investors. How do you make yourself stand out from the crowd? Well, we talk about something when we work with people called streams of commonality, right? So if you can identify, and this is where you know a lot of people go too broad when they're looking for investors, say, oh, doctors, lawyers, people have money. I don't care if, if they have a pulse and they have money, uh, I'm, I'm good. Like they can invest some ideals. And in reality, you have to look at, okay, what do you have in common with people, right? So for example, you know, one of our clients, he comes from a corporate background, Fortune 500 company. So his entire strategy, especially on LinkedIn, is to talk to people at that company, right? Because that commonality, you can't fake that. No one can not come off. Like literally no one can compete on that commonality. So it's unique and there's that instant rapport, right? So that's one way to do it. Another way is to address some of their questions, concerns, in your marketing in advance. Very few syndicators are doing that, right? A lot of syndicators are talking about deals and cap rates and all these different things that are nice, but you wanna create what's called a paradigm shift, right? And I talk about this on one of my podcast episodes as well, where if you can change someone's way of thinking or someone's perspective, that's the most powerful way you can educate someone, not just throwing data and facts at them. So I love the find your niche, find commonality, because that is something that I've been teaching people for a long time. And someone will come to me and they're in the military. Well, your target market is other people in the military, mm -hmm. maybe even other people in your branch of the military, mm -hmm. right? <laughs> um, 
and you know doctors mostly i get a lot of people that come from the medical profession so it's like hey you already know how to talk the lingo yep. of the people in your profession those are the people that you should be trying to uh, approach for investing with you and they're all interested in one learning right yeah. I think a lot of people would really like to invest in real estate as part of a group if they knew there was a possibility or a way to even do that. Mm -hmm. And uh, so for a lot of investors, they've never even heard of the concept. So your job is to train them and show them that this is something that you can do. Um, so I, I love that your system seems to, to be able to bridge that gap. Um, all right. So what's the difference between posting content and direct messaging for finding investors? So there's a big difference. Posting content is your, it's a little less intentional. It can be very effective. Just got to be consistent with it. And the big thing is, you know, when you post, you never know who's going to see it, right? You know, you could have someone randomly reach out. You could not, you know, and a lot of people in the syndication space, their networks on LinkedIn and Facebook it's other syndicators, right? So, you know, you might get a pat on the back, you might get a like, you might get a comment, but is that going to translate into the dollars raised? Probably not, right? So with direct messages, and ideally, you know, once someone is really up and going, they're doing a combination of both. But initially, we talked about building that foundation, direct messages, you can very intentionally target who's getting your message, okay? What they're seeing, when they're seeing it, you can grab their attention, it's one-to-one, -one, and you can streamline and automate a lot of it, right? So, it's more intentional. You can build value faster. You can get someone to raise their hand and say, yeah, I'm interested faster. And it just, it expedites things and it takes a lot less. Once it's up and it takes some bandwidth to build the systems, right? But once it's up and running, it takes less bandwidth. It's very much managing the system instead of having to constantly, you know, update the direct messages or having to constantly, you know, switch up the campaign. Because once you've got one that's working, it's continuing to dial that in, rinse and repeat with posting, you know, you're, you're posting, if you're doing it right, at least three times a week, right? So there's a level of consistency there. Um, what I like about direct messaging, again, just kind of meeting what I found in my years working with syndicators and capital raisers is a lot of people, they need that foundation. How can they book their first, you know, few calls a week with potential investors, right? And that starts with direct relationship building, right? It's the closest thing to being in a room with people and meeting those high net worth individuals in person. Yeah, they definitely need to see your name more than once mm -hmm. and see you out there and, you know, making yourself a thought leader, right? Yep. That's kind of the whole concept is once you're a thought leader and they look at you as, hey, this guy knows what he's doing or this this gal really seems to uh, get this, then they start trusting you. And next thing you know, they want to do business with you. So when do you think is the right time to start building a personal brand? I think it's yesterday, right? I think for, for people who haven't started, and I want to unpack what personal brand really means. My definition is a little bit different. I don't think you need, I don't think it's about having a fancy looking website or a bunch of fancy looking marketing materials necessarily. It's about being clear on what you stand for, right? It's about being clear on your messaging. Does it, because to me, messaging defines a personal brand. So if your brand is XYZ Capital, cool. You're the, maybe you're the president, founder of XYZ Capital. That's how you're positioning your personal brand. Nothing wrong with that. You don't need to be a speaker and you know, do all that necessarily. But at the same time, you know, when someone goes to your LinkedIn profile, your Facebook, you know, go to your website, they need to be able to see a picture of you and say, okay, that, here's that person. Here's some of their core values. Here's a little bit about their story, right? To at least humanize you. So we talk about humanizing and marketing as a really important thing. And it's something that I think is going to continue to be a bigger trend. I think a lot of people, and I'm not knocking because I've done this before too, they'll read a marketing book or two and they'll go out and their messaging sounds very, I want to use the word salesy, but almost like kind of sleazy or inauthentic or very like, hey, I'm going to, here's the five bullet point statements and yeah, like I should check the box, right? But if you tell that human story, so for example, when we work with people in their investor attraction webinars and we want to identify, okay, what's the story? What are the commonalities to weave in? Because if someone's saying, hey, that person's like me, it's a lot easier to build trust, right? So that personal brand does that. And that thought leadership also, it happens over time, right? That compounds, right? So that's something that doesn't happen overnight, but the conversations can happen much more quickly. 
And then also once someone's on your investor list, and a lot of syndicators mess this up, right, is someone's on the list, the only time they hear from the syndicators when the syndicator has a deal to pitch, right? Well, there's, you know, there's a lot of opportunities to have multiple touch points, establish that thought leadership, be consistent, be relevant, and be frequent with that person, right? And that personal brand piece, yes, it's a perception. Yes, it could be, you know, how the, the branding looks and the images, but it's also the feeling that you create with people and how they resonate and what they find, what they see in themselves that they see in you. You said three words that I thought were really important. Consistent, relevant, and what was the third? Frequent. And frequent. Fre- frequency, right? So frequency and consistency, they're, they're similar. Right, right, right. Frequency is just how often you're going to be consistent, right? You know, what's right. the, what's the, in, how in, intentionally are you going to communicate once a week, a couple times a month, once a month, right? Definitely consistent. Uh, you know, we started these podcasts uh, in 2016 and, you know, it's just amazing how quickly time goes by and yeah. almost, there's more than 60 podcast episodes out there. And now I'm getting to a point where we might have to do them twice a month because I'm backing up on speakers that I really want to interview. And <laughs> so I think probably bump up our frequency and of course everybody has told me you need to do it once a week but you know i also have to live my life yeah <laughs> and that's too. important too that's something <laughs> i have to constantly remind myself of and all of you need to remember that too don't forget to live your life don't forget mm. to live your life that is hugely important um okay cool so so not only do you get uh, marketing lessons here you get life lessons uh, <laughs> what are you the most important tech tools for people to have if they want to implement their system implement your system yeah the, the, there's quite a few um i'll say obviously you know having things like a funnel where you can actually capture leads not just the website that's really important is that like your crm or is that you know, active so campaign. it's, I mean, to get really tactical, it's having a landing page, right? So a page where people go, they can opt in name, email, ideally whether or not they're an accredited investor, right? Um, a thank you page after they've opted in, right? You know, having automated emails when we work with people and we design these things, it's usually seven to 10 posts, we call them the post webinar emails, right? Inviting people to book a call, find out more, re-emphasizing some of those key content points from the webinar. Um, also having, yeah, a CRM autoresponder where you can tag people, right? So we share with people, okay, you want to tag people three different ways. Once they've opted in, you've got your active investors. These are people who have already invested in your deals, right? You've got your deal ready investors. You've talked to them, you've established a relationship, you know, how much capital they're bringing to the table. Um, there's a good chance when you're doing your next indication they're they're in, right? And then you've got that final group who have opted in. Maybe they requested something for free. Uh, maybe they were in your friends and family. You guys talked three years ago, but they haven't just yet, um, you know, committed to saying, hey, okay, I'm ready for that next deal, right? So you want to be able to segment that list. Um, there's, I mean, there's page builder tools out there. There's, there's a lot of different ones that people can use. Um, also CRMs. I mean, there's some different ones. I'll be talking about this on next week's workshop as well. But the, the biggest thing is making sure the other thing too, and I want to say this with the tech tools, right? It's easy to creatively procrastinate and do a bunch of research on the tech tools and not get a whole lot done, right? So a lot of the tech tools, they do the same thing. And once you get them set up, you know, again, spend your time, energy, focus on actually building relationships with investors not upgrading the tech tools because a lot of them, the CRM, they do pretty much the same thing, right? That the good ones do. Well, uh, my advice to people that are exploring tech tools is do not opt in for the annual plan because it's cheaper. Uh, do the monthly, pay the extra yeah. monthly, use it for six months, make sure you're going to keep using it before you decide to go with the annual plan because I have been locked into, you know, one, two, three year long contracts on things that I didn't like after the first six months. And uh, I'm, I'm, I'm still in one of those now. So just be cash, cautious about that. Um, you know, don't, don't let that happen to you. But, uh, and we've gone through multiple CRMs. We started with Insightly for our law firm. That's a Google app. And then we uh, graduated up to uh, Active Campaign. And then we went beyond ca- Active Campaign and now use HubSpot. And of course, each of those have increasing expense levels associated with them, but they all have increased um, you know, capabilities. Mm-hmm. So I, I would imagine there's some out, some that you like. Would you be mm-hmm. willing to share some of those yeah. with us? Or? Yeah. So for clients, we recommend Active Campaign mo- mo- majority of the time, right? Some okay. people are using Infusionsoft, Keep. Um, I wouldn't I, recommend. I thought it was a nightmare. <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't, wouldn't recommend starting with that. It's it's complicated. 
Uh, so, it, well, and that was the problem that we had with some of them is that they were so complicated, we never figured it out. And so we're just like, forget it. It's too much. Yeah, and it's, it's an energy suck, right? So when in doubt, active campaign is, is what I'll say for CRMs. We use Kartra. It's a little more advanced. We pay a little more too, but it, you know, we do some pretty nifty things with segmentation and all those different things. But again, like when in doubt with CRMs, active campaign. Um, and I know there's a few different softwares for investor portals as well and maybe there's some, some that you recommend but you know there, there's a few that um i usually recommend to people and then on the technology side too i mean there's there's different there's different tools for text message automation um there's different tools for page builders too sometimes that's separate from a crm i think what else we i mean if people are starting the podcast there's different tools so one of the things for you know next week, and you know, I know we we'll talk about this in a second. We actually give people a document that's like, okay, here's the tech tools that we recommend. Right? You can also automate a lot of the LinkedIn messages. There's tech tools for that. There's tools to automate posting. So a lot of people are surprised at how much can be really streamlined and automated. Right? I'm big on systematizing things. Right? So if we can have it to where it's systematized or automated, let's do that. As long as we're not losing the relationship building element. Excellent. All right. So I'm just going to remind everybody, if you have questions, this is a great time to start putting them in the chat or putting them in the Q and a, uh, cause we're going to, uh, we're down to our last couple of questions and then we're going to go live. Uh, you can ask questions of Jakob. You can ask questions of me. We're happy to answer anything, uh, that we can't get through during this hour call. Um, all right. So what do you think are some of the biggest opportunities for finding investors in 2023? Yeah, it's a great question. I think right now with what's happened in the stock market, right? I think there is a whole pool of people who are working corporate whose portfolios took a dump this year. I mean, let's just call it what it is, right? And in the past, I think finding investors, having the conversation where you were talking about things like cash flow, tax benefits, all still very important things. But I think now it's much more directly, hey, you've got this big problem. I've got a great solution. It's safer, right? It, you're actually going to get cash flow, right? You know, monthly passive income, right? Or, or quarterly, however you do your payouts. And so it's a real solution to a problem. So marrying the two without doing it in a way that um, doesn't meet people where they're at. Because a lot of people don't know what a syndication is, right? I know, I know it's crazy for people you know, on this call. A lot of people have no idea what a syndication is. And they're legitimately high net worth individuals, right? You have a, access to a decent amount of money. So I think the opportunity with the um, money sitting in retirement accounts is something like $4 trillion um, that's, that's sitting there. Um, that could potentially be accessed through self-directed IRAs. I think that's a big opportunity. I think people are craving connection more than they ever have. I think especially a humanness in our marketing, right? You know, telling stories, establishing that commonality, that's going to be more important. I think you know, paid advertising online, if any of you have done it, I would advise against it right now, unless you've already have a, I always tell you, unless you have 10,000 a month that you're just willing to spend for six months and get no results on the paid ad side, I would say don't do it, right? Because it it can um, be be a money drain, and paid advertising has really changed a lot with iOS, and like, there's some different things. But I think niche specific advertising could be really powerful, right? You know, specific journals, magazines, websites, blogs, much better ROI, right? And I think it's also important to build that trust in advance. I think a lot of people are familiar with like you know, there's crowdsource platforms for investing. Um, how people know what a read is, right? So it's really important to educate people and build that trust in advance and take care of that as much as you can before they have an opportunity to invest. Because if you give someone an opportunity to invest and they've got those unspoken objections and you're not anticipating those, it's going to take a lot longer for them to invest. So I think um, the other thing with social media, I think the opportunity for reach is still out there, you know, even on the organic side, even with posting, direct messaging, reaching people, building those relationships. Um, so I think that's a big thing. And I think the world of alternative investing is still very much a golden age. I think, you know, over the next 12, 18 months, there's going to be access to some great deals out there. So even if the media is screaming, hey, recession or whatever the case may be, I think the people who are the most aggressive in their marketing and building that list bigger, better, faster, they're going to really be able to have a lot more assets under management and raise a lot of money. Because I think people are looking for a legitimate solution to what's a very big problem right now. 
Well, this is really good advice. Uh, and I'm sure there's a lot of people I'm taking a lot of notes. I hope some of you are in the audience as well. Um, and I just want to know, all right, so all this is sounds really great. It sounds like you've got it down. How in the world would uh, somebody like me that wants your services work with you? And, you know, what, what do you have to offer? Yeah, so our core program, that's, you know, it's called an Investor Attraction Academy. And we basically build out a lot of the tech stuff, the systems for you. Right? So literally, we'll customize it towards what you need. And then we give you a strategic plan, messaging templates for how to execute the system. Best way for people to learn more next week on the 29th, we're having a live workshop. It's going to be a two hour workshop where we go in depth on some of these strategies, systems, tools. It's a great introduction to some of this stuff. It's a great way to kind of understand, okay, where I'm at, where I'm going and whether or not you'd be a fit to work with us. So that's something we're making available. So my recommendation for people who are interested, curious, a workshop, we're making it available at a ridiculously low price because I want to be able to share this with a live audience. And I want to make sure that before we talk to people that they're educated, they're informed, and they understand that it's a fit, right? They understand there's some alignment, right? So we're going to drop, if you have a link, Kim, or we can drop that in the chat. And if not, you, you know, can put it into the chat. Can you do that? Yeah, I need to, I just I want to, I don't have it in front of me, but we can definitely um, find it here in a second um, or at, at the very least follow up with it. So that's called the Attracting Investors in 2023 Workshop. I know Kim's got a special code, so you can get in for 23 bucks. I know, I know it sounds crazy, 2023, 23 bucks, but again, it's a great introduction. It's actually going to be a real content, real strategies. At the very least, you'll leave with one or two ideas of things you can do to grow your investor list. And if, you know, at that point you're like, okay, I wanna work with these guys, really get the style, then get the fastest results possible. We'll share how to do that on the workshop as well. And I'm gonna go, as we start taking questions, I'm gonna see if I can find Okay, so I've got some of these uh, links right now. Let's see, what do I do? Trackable registration link for the workshop, right? That's the one? That's yeah. Put in there. I'm going to put that one in right now. So if anybody wants to join the workshop there, uh, yeah. go ahead and do that. And it looks like you might have a, a couple other offers. There's a guide. Yeah, there. so there's a coupon code. So um, if people people click on that link and then use the coupon code Kim at checkout, you'll get in for 23 bucks. So, wow. so, that's, so that's what I recommend. Um, we'll share the guide with people who um, attend the workshop as well, but it's going to be on the 29th. This is the coupon code for the for the workshop or for the guide? For the workshop, yeah. Okay. The coupon code is for the workshop. Um, so that if they go to the page, they enter that at checkout, they can get in for 23 bucks because it's 2023. All right, cool. Okay, awesome. I'm gonna put that in the chat also. Okay. And um, let's see what else. So anything else that we haven't covered that you think we should talk about, Yakov? That important for our audience? Yeah, so we've got some questions. We can we can go to those. I just, I think it's really important for people to think about capital raising and investor attraction systematically. I can't stress that enough. I think, and I, I, I don't know, you probably are the same way, Kim. I get messages literally every week. Someone's like, hey, I need to raise 250K in the next seven days. Okay, do you have anyone I can talk to? I'm like, <laughs> should have you know built those relationships beforehand right because one of the work and it's also not legal like if you're if you need an extra 250k and you're just blasting it out and it's a 506 b you know it, it's also not legal and it's not the smartest approach so this is all about building those relationships in advance having that list so you can turn to people when you have that deal and you're doing the next nice syndication and have that confidence that you can go out there and raise the money right it's a huge leverage point yeah, absolutely. And, you know, that's what we're all about, too. We have a program also that can help you and can go hand in hand with what you're doing with Yakov. And uh, what we call ours is a pre-syndication retainer. And that's for people who are in between deals. They don't have a deal right now, but they want to come work on their investor marketing program. And that's exactly what Yakov's talking about. So, uh, you know, for me, I uh, the, what we teach is you've got to have a combination of your online presence and your physical presence, right? You can go to meetings in your local communities. You've got to learn what to say when you meet new people and they ask you what you're doing. So you have to get polished with uh, your response to that question. You know, some people call it an elevator pitch, but it has to come off organic. So, you know, we, we have 
with our pre-syndication retainer program, we'll give you an investor marketing plan template where you can write down, this is what I'm going to do to find investors. This is what I'm going to build out this year. And number one on the list should be, I'm going to have Yakov help me with my, uh, <clears throat> my online presence. And, uh, and then number two is this is, you know, these are the kind of meetings I'm going to go to and I'm going to go, you know, two or three times a month and they could be meetups, they could be real estate investment association meetings, or anything like that. Um, and then uh, you've got to figure out how you're going to follow up. So that again, goes back to Yakov's system of what are you going to do? And then what are you going to have in place that you can use when you um, meet people in person? Right. Would you hand something, hand them that they can take back to their family or their friends? Or can you create a, an educational webinar or something like that that's going to educate them on the process? So I think, uh, you know, that that you can get a lot of that um, content and that um, guidance, you know, from both Yakov and us. So uh, I highly encourage you to do that. We do weekly masterminds on Wednesdays at uh, 9 a.m. Pacific time, noon Easter time. Uh, so there we go. And, uh, let's go to questions. Yeah. So before we do, I just want to make sure it says the chat is disabled. So I want to make sure people can see the oh, link because that might've just gone to you and I, so let's. Yeah. And I sent it out. If you guys can't see it, let us know. I sent it out to me and everybody. I'm not sure why it's disabled for you. Um, so I did try to send that out. Yeah. We have, it's we have one person, Marie saying she, you know, they, they can see the link. Oh, they can. Okay. Yeah, one person said, but guys, I just confirm or someone in the chat or the Q&A that you can, in fact, see the link in the coupon code. Okay, it says chat yeah, disabled, but we can working. see the link. Okay, cool. So, okay, so we're, we're good on that. Yeah, and I just clicked the link and it went right to your page. Okay, perfect. perfect. Um, okay, so uh, Satish says, uh, so is level one strategy is to direct messaging folks in your social media network and set up a call with them? So she just wanted to confirm what is that level one strategy. It might not be directly setting up a call. It's more of, you know, just building the relationship, gauging interest, establishing commonality, curiosity, all those different things before setting up a call. If you've known them for a while, I mean, you, you could be a little more direct there too, but there's some different strategies. We'll, we'll talk about that next week too. So level one is, yeah, having a way to directly build relationships from anywhere, right? You know, meeting people in person is great. And it's also great to be able to sit on your laptop you know, at home or wherever, wherever you want to be. And each and every day you're building conversations, you're starting dialogues with people who potentially become investors, right? It's, it's really powerful to be able to do that. So that's, that's level one. Okay, great. Um, Steven asks, uh, Yakov seems to really know his stuff. How do we draw people to our front door once we build the front door? Great question. So that's where all these different marketing platforms come in. Everyone's a little bit different. That's where LinkedIn, Facebook, wherever you, um, wherever you're gonna strategically be online, right? That's that's what you're using, right? So on the inbound side, you know, there's a number of different strategies. So for example, let's say you're a guest. I'll give you just one like kind of easy to digest example, right? So let's say you're a guest on a podcast, right? And someone at the end of the podcast will usually say, okay, so where can people go to find out more? If you just drive people to your website, that's cool. You'll get some people potentially, but you haven't captured the lead, right? So unless they're hot to trot, ready to go, ready to have a call, you miss out on the lead, right? Versus if you say, okay, go to this link, you can access a free training that I recorded, right? You know, talking about passive passive income strategies in any economy. I'm just like shooting from the hip on titles, right? Because titles are very important. You'd say, go to this URL. I go to the page. I listen to you on a podcast. I put in my name and my email. Now our relationship starts and it starts one to many. Now I'm getting emails from you. Now I can watch a presentation. Now I'm well informed. Now I trust you before we talk versus it kind of being ice cold, right? So that's just, that's one of the strategies. It's really having multiple, just like you want multiple deals, multiple streams of income, multiple ways of getting people in that front door on your calendar. Well, and make sure you're following up with those people because I can't tell you the number of times I've put my name in on somebody's yeah. website and never heard from them again. Well, that's 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 where the, the automation comes in and the CRM and all the, all the tech stuff, right? Because, you know, the, to manually remember to do that can be tough. Yes. All right. Richard asks, uh, amen to that on tech tools. Thanks, Richard. Um, 
And then he says, thoughts about syndication model to acquire businesses or best for real estate. You can use these uh, syndication, the, the, the rules for raising private money from private individuals, you know, so high net worth investors, friends, family, acquaintances, um, people you meet on the internet, individuals, the SEC calls them all retail investors. Um, people, you can, uh, the rules of raising money are the same for all retail investors. So it doesn't matter what you're raising money for. You could buy, be buying a plane, yachts, uh, you know, land in another country, uh, multifamily properties here, any kind of asset class you can imagine for real estate or businesses. Um, the, there are some differences, some additional hurdles that you will have to jump through if you're buying securities and other people's offerings versus buying something directly that you're going to own and control, um, and specifically real estate. So if you're going to own and control real estate, then you just have to follow the Securities Act of 1933. If you're going to do a fund of funds and you're going to start uh, raising a pool of people who are going to invest in other people's deals, then you're going to have to uh, follow some additional rules that can be uh, quite burdensome. Uh, so um, if you're going to be buying uh, and just owning businesses directly, then the, yes, there may be some additional rules that apply, but it's probably not going to be uh, all that onerous. So yeah, absolutely. And we do have an attorney in our team that specifically deals with non-real estate offerings. Uh, and he's taken a lot of companies public and you know can help with all aspects of those types of offerings. So yes. Um, uh, Richard asks again, in using short videos on LinkedIn, maybe more effective than blog article or written uh, posts, or is it better to post on YouTube or directed emails? Um, so the short videos on LinkedIn right now, they're not doing as well. Um, LinkedIn long form is working well, especially for this type of audience. Um, and then as far as the short videos, it's just one of those things you can repurpose a video a lot of different ways and get it transcribed. You can make that a blog. Um, the biggest thing though, that I'd say when it comes to the short videos, and I want to reread, um, the, qu the question here, I just saw something. Okay. So, um, I wouldn't use short videos on LinkedIn posting on YouTube. It's one of those things. It's more of, again, a level two or even level three strategy. It's very long-term. Love email marketing, especially if people have already opted in. That's great. So if you're sending in e a short video in an email, for example, say, hey, click the link, watch the short video, right? So that that's the big thing. But I wouldn't go, if you're doing Instagram, that type of thing, yeah, those short videos, real style things, they're effective. Here's the problem. And here's what people don't understand about investor attraction. A lot of these high net worth individuals are going to be a little bit older. They're going to be usually 40 plus, not always, but typically 40 plus. If they're actually serious, legit investors, and they're talking about investing their money, okay, they're going to want to do their due diligence. They're open to being educated, right? They don't need the video to be 30 seconds or less, right? They, they really don't. They're going to sit and watch like you guys are here. You know, we've been here almost an hour. We didn't need to make a 30 second reel talking about this stuff. You would have just been like, okay, cool. And brushed it off. Right. So don't be afraid of doing long form content. Be open to having depth, right? Cause that depth creates trust. It creates the sense that you know your stuff, right? So that's a really key thing. Um, the other thing that I'll say that I'm just on the short video side is don't just make sure you're very intentional if you're going to be doing that, because a lot of people are just doing that to create content. It's a lot of work. You might even have an editing team. And it's like, does it really create the outcome that you're looking for? Does it put you in front of investors? Does it get you calls? And does it, you know, raise capital for you at the end of the day? And if it does not, if you're just like, if you were playing the popularity contest on social media, how many views and likes and comments, yeah, that stuff's cool, but where's the real ROI on that? So just be mindful of that with the videos. So, um, hey, Hector said that the code, coupon code doesn't work. Yeah, so that, that's my bad. It's KLT. So capital K is in Kim, L is in Lisa, T is in Taylor. So it's it's okay. KLT. Yeah. Forgive, okay. forgive me, guys. We've had a lot of moving part on the, on the automation side, right? So yeah, coupon code is KLT. That should do the trick. I just verified that. Okay, I'm going to just put that in the chat. Okay, great. Um, <clears throat> all right, so that's done. Um, let's see. Got a lot of other questions. Okay. Um, 
Let's go do that. All right, they've got KLT. It's now working. All right, so we've gotten through those. Uh, I think we've gotten through all of those. Did anybody raise their hand? Nobody's brave enough to be live. So, so there's so there's someone. Is there someone live there? There, I, I see Hugo and I see Bud. Okay, go ahead. I'm not seeing Hugo. I'm not seeing them. Go ahead. You want to add? Can you see their question? Uh, well, well, Hugo I, guess, just, I guess I have to. You might be able to make them. So Hugo just kind of reappear disappear i'm gonna see i'm gonna click on yeah so i'm clicking on him and he is not so bud has his hand raised so i think the way to, to, to do this is going to be but if you've got a question you can probably put it in the there Q &A we box and let's yeah. see if we can call okay we, we got it down we're, we're just on a roll today <laughs> that is you know chat is disabled yeah there, hey, there you go bud how are you doing Doing very well. I wanted to know if there's going to be a replay. Uh, we're live streaming on uh, YouTube right now, so you can go to YouTube right after this and listen to this again if you want. Great. Thank you very much. Yeah. And then we will be posting this on our podcast. So our podcast is uh, Raise Private Money Legally. It's on 20 different podcast platforms. I uh, encourage all of you to sign up and subscribe to that. There's over 60 different epi episodes, so you can learn, you know, listen to it while you're in the car or wherever you want to be. Um, let's see. Uh, here is our link to the podcast. I'm going to stick that in the chat also. And then um, if you have been listening to the podcast and you want to give us a review, we would love that. There's a link for that, too. It's like There's an app for that. There's an app for everything. And then, uh, you know, we uh, we love reviews. So if you guys want to give us a Google review, we're going to go ahead and put that in the chat also. And if you want to save the chat uh, from this entire program, you can do so. If you go down to where you would type a message, uh, there's three little dots to the right of that. If you click those dots, then uh, you're going to get a pop up. And one of the options is to save the chat. So you can just save this chat and get all these links keep them on your computer and then uh, use them when you're ready. Um, all right, well, we are, uh, anybody have any questions for me? I'm happy to answer those as well, um, but uh, yeah, Looks God. like we've, we've got one more here. What's your take on pitch decks? Go so, for it. I mean, uh, well, I'll, I'll have you answer that first and then I'll, I'll give a little bit of a unique perspective. So you need a pitch deck. Um, you know, if you're going to, you can do a webinar, right, where where you're going to be talking to a group of people and you want to educate a group of people, you can use a pitch deck for that. Uh, or you can do some kind of educational content uh, where you're just explaining what is syndication, how it works. Um, if you don't have a deal, your pitch deck is going to be a lot like that anyway, kind of, you know, here's mm -hmm. what our business does. We we do these kinds of real estate deals. We put small groups of people together. Here's how you can participate. Here's the kind of returns that we look for, et cetera. So it's very generic about what in general your, your team does. If you're doing a um, offering, if you have a pre-vetted group of investors, then you can do a deal specific pitch deck and you can invite those pre-vetted investors because that those are the people that you have established the right substantive relationship with. Uh, so once you have that relationship, you're able to pitch deals to them in a group, uh, as long as you're not including outsiders that aren't pre-vetted in that pitch. Uh, but then you could, you know, and, and I always recommend 15, 20 slides. This should only take 15 or 20 minutes. If you're doing an hour and a half presentation, you've just you know made everybody go to sleep and everybody forgot what you were talking about. Right. So, um, 15, 20 slides max and uh, not a lot of words on a page. Uh, you're, you're, it's bullet points that are reminding you what you want to talk about. You're not letting people read whole sentences on your pages, or that's going to be a very boring presentation as well. Um, if you are doing a 506 C, uh, offering and that is, you are allowed to advertise, then you would be able to, uh, you know, pitch your deal to an entire group of people. You don't have to know that they're all accredited. You just have to make sure that before they actually make an investment that they are accredited. So, you know, there's lots of different ways to use pitch decks. So you've got your generic one before you have deals. You've got your deal specific one for a 506B offering only to pre-vetted investors. And you've got your 506C that you could do to more uh, the general public, uh, you just have to make sure that the messaging is correct. Yakov, go ahead and contradict me if you want. 
No, that's that's exactly <laughs> what I was going to say. And like, so a lot of people, when, when I say do a webinar, you know, we're not talking about having a pitch deck and pitching a deal on a webinar. You can, but once you've got the relationship, the investor attraction webinar, just what you mentioned, introductory webinar, you know, telling a little bit about your story, explaining what a syndication is, explaining what passive investing really means, that type of stuff, educating people, right? So I think I think people skip that step too often. I think, you know, the first time they talk, so even if you're friends and family, you're, if you're going in for the kill on the pitch deck on the deal and that educational foundation isn't there, it's very hard to convert someone and get them to actually wire you money, right? Well, so, and I would argue that your first your first conversation is not a pitch. Your yeah. first conversation is, is uh, hey, this is what we do in general. We're just talking to people to see yeah. who might be interested. Exactly. And then if they say, well, yeah, that sounds kind of interesting. Then you say, we've, uh, you know, the SEC and, you know, legally we're required to ask you some specific questions to know if this is going to be a good fit for you before we can talk to you about specific offerings. So if they you get their permission to ask the questions and then you ask them, are you accredited? You give them the definition. If they say no, then you say, are you sophisticated? And you said something earlier, Yakov, and I think a lot of people miss miss out on this and maybe it's going to change the way you do things but if the only question you're asking an investor is are you accredited and they say no they have just ruled themselves out as even being eligible to invest and that is absolutely not true because all it requires is that if mm -hmm. they're not accredited are they sophisticated and then you develop a relationship with them uh, and now you can offer them uh, Rule 506B offerings that allow you to include up to 35 non-accredited but sophisticated investors. So I really think you always have to ask, are you accredited? And if no, are you sophisticated? Uh, or, or not really even if no, because even your accredited investors are supposed to be sophisticated. So I think you've right. got to ask that second question, though. And, and that requires giving them the definition of what does the SEC say that means, and then letting them explain in their own words why they think they qualify. Yeah. And, and a lot of people who don't even know they're accredited, that, that's why, you know, some of our clients, they'll, they'll talk to someone like accredited. Well, and they're like, yeah, you're definitely accredited. Dude. Your net worth is this. You're they, they don't really know what that means, which is that's right. So you give them the definitions. They do you, you know, do you check this box, right? Oh, yeah, I meet that. And uh, and you don't have to get verifications from anybody uh, until you're doing a 506C offering and it's at the time they make the investment. So at that point, that you have to go through the verification process. Until then, you're just asking questions and you're taking note of what the answers are and putting it into your database so that you've now tagged them as accredited or not accredited, but sophisticated. So, you know, when Yakov was saying you have to assign tags to people, you definitely want to have, uh, you know, your pre-vetted and then you want to ask, uh, you want to know if they're accredited because then you're not going to be offering, uh, you could offer them either 506B or 506C offerings, but for your non-accredited, you're not going to be email blasting them about 506C offerings that they're not uh, eligible to participate in. Um, so Yakov, we do have one more important question. We're running a little bit over, but what is your email and contact information? How can people get a hold of you? Yeah, best way we can put the email in the or I guess not not the chat box. Let's see if, if I can do it. Um, so my email is Yakov at linkleads.us. Obviously, I'm on LinkedIn. Our website is findmoreinvestors.com. Best thing to do, though, guys, if you're around next week on the 29th, that workshop, it's going to end. And we see a few more questions I know we don't have time for. Can answer those for you on that workshop. So it's the best way to learn. It's the best way to get in touch and kind of really get a go deeper on this stuff and get a feel for, first of all, what you need to do, how it applies to you, and just really the best way to leverage what's available in terms of system strategies for growing your investor list and finding more investors in 2023. Excellent. All right. Uh, one more time, your email, Yakov at linked leads. Linked leads .us. Yep. US. Okay, it's in the chat. I'm going to give you guys a couple minutes to grab that chat. Um, make sure you do. And uh, this has been really great. I appreciate this very much. Um, I've learned a lot. I think I need to be on your call. <laughs> <laughs> probably need to, uh, to actually just have a private conversation and say, all right, what do, what, what do I have to do to get started? Um, but uh, anyway, thanks so much. Uh, we appreciate everybody taking your time to be with us today. And we look forward to talking to you as, um, you know, having you as clients or potential clients. If you want to schedule an appointment with us, 
go to syndicationattorneys.com and there's a schedule an appointment button. You can go through a little you know, question of what you're looking for and we'll get you to the right person so that uh, you can engage with us and we'd be happy to have you. We are also offering a holiday fund sale. We do it annually. Uh, we have 20% off all blind pool funds right now, 15% off all syndications and $200 off our pre-syndication retainers if they're prepaid by the end of uh, December. So you've got uh, nine more days to take advantage of that. And uh, I look forward to talking to all of you.